What is Microsoft Entra in Microsoft 365? And more crucially, why does your business need it? We'll find out in today's video with an analogy and of course a full demo. But before we start, just a quick intro. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT. Our business looks after companies all over the world with a Microsoft 365. So what is Entra, which is part of Microsoft 365? Well, for me to be able to demonstrate what it is, we need to go back in time. Actually, back to our school days. If you remember when you were back at school, you and other children were sat in a classroom. And in that classroom, you had a teacher. It was that teacher who made all the rules. What time you had to arrive at school, what you were learning that day, when you could speak, when you couldn't speak, what time you had lunch. All of these rules were created by the teacher. Now, if we compare the school analogy to our old fashioned technology setups, the analogy is the same. Our classroom was our business network. Our classmates were the computers in your business. And the teacher, well, that was the server in your office. And it was the server that made all of the rules. It was the server that told you what your username and password was, what printers you could print to, what data you could access, whether you could install applications on your PC. The server controlled it all. Now, let's go back to our school days again. Imagine if you were sat in your classroom with all your classmates and you didn't have a teacher. It would be absolute anarchy. The same could be said for a business without a server. What usernames and passwords would people use? It wouldn't be centralized. You'd have people accessing data that they weren't meant to see. You'd have people installing whatever applications they wanted on their computers. It wouldn't be secure and it'd be an absolute mess. But let's face it, it's now 2024. What business wants to go out and spend thousands of pounds on a new server for their office? And then it's got to be maintained and backed up. Businesses just don't need that anymore. Technology has moved on. But we still need a teacher, don't we? So step forward, Microsoft Enter ID, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. But the naming isn't important. Microsoft 365 is your new classroom. Your classmates are still the computers in your business. But your new teacher is Enter ID. You now use Microsoft Enter ID to create all the rules for your business. It controls the rules of usernames and passwords, what data people can access. Can people use their personal smartphones at work? Can people use their own devices to access your Microsoft 365? Do people need MFA? Well, that is all down to your teacher. It's down to Microsoft Enter ID and how you configure it. So if you're ever sat opposite your IT company and they're talking about domains and Azure AD and Entra, please don't glaze over. Just remember, we've got to go back to school. Now, I'm sure you've all been waiting for a bit of a demo on Entra ID. So without further ado, let's jump onto that computer behind me and I'll show you. So how do you access Enter ID? Well, firstly, you've got to log into Microsoft 365 as an admin. You can see I'm logged in here. So I go over to the admin centers and I'll launch that here. Once that's launched, I can click on show all and it'll show all my settings. So I want to scroll down to the admin centers and the one I want is called identity. So let me launch that. Okay, let me minimize this here because it might be a good time to talk about licensing. So we've got a few sections here. We've got identity, protection, identity governance, verified ID and permissions management. So how is Enter ID licensed? You can see here, look, it says my license is an Enter ID P1. Let's just go over to the licensing page here. So there's a few different versions of Enter ID. There's a free version, there's a P1, there's a P2 and there's an ID governance. The main ones are these two here, P1 and P2. Now using this, you can just simply scroll down and see what is included within each. Okay, so the P1 is $6 a month. However, the P1 is also included in Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Okay, so that's £18.10 per user per month. If you're in a small business, you should definitely be using 
Microsoft 365 Business Premium. You've got a P2 one as well. It just has some more features. You can go onto these and it'll show you what is included and what isn't. When it comes to protection, for example, click on here, you've got some advanced security features that are included in P2 that aren't in P1, but P1 is still a very good product. So that is how it's licensed. And if you look, if you look down these here, these sections, identity protection, and you go back here, you can see that it corresponds to different sections within Entra ID. Okay, so let's go to Entity and Overview, and it's just this page here. Firstly, this is the name of my tenancy. This is my tenant ID. So what's a tenant ID? Well, all the different companies in the world that are using Microsoft 365, this is what differentiates you to them. Everybody has a different tenant ID. So this is the tenant ID for the test tenant that I'm currently using. Then it says about the primary domain. So this is the primary domain that this tenant uses. If you go back to the page here, and if we go to settings domains, you can see that that corresponds to this here. So you can have all the all your domains in there, but the default domain is this one we've put in here. And it also shows it there. As I mentioned before, you can see what license we're using. So this is a business premium license. And so it's saying here that Microsoft Entra ID P1 is in use. If we move along some of the settings here, we've got a monitoring section, so you can look at the sign-ins. We've got a properties section, so some more settings here. You can see that my data location is the EU. Okay, you can have your, your data location in any Azure data center in the world. If this is the wrong one for you, maybe because of data compliance, then you can put a ticket in and Microsoft will change it. Okay, the tenant ID, tenant ID is here again. And then we've got an interesting section that we, we are going to move on to in a moment, but this is called the security score. Okay, so this tenant gets 26% security score. That's not very high. That means that there's a lot of security improvements that we can make to this test tenant. And Microsoft make it very easy for you because to tell you everything you need to do below here, that can improve your security score. So for example, here, we've got a priority of one, require multi-factor authentication for all administrators. Okay, if we did that, we'd get another 10 points, okay? And our security score would go up. So you can work through all of these. My recommendation is to start with the high ones, then go to the medium, and then finally the low, and that will really secure your tenancy. If you click into any of these, you can see it tells you a little bit more information about that. So that's the overview section of Entra ID. If we then go on to users, okay, on this screen, here's all our users. So we've got a few display names, some user principal names, and then we've got the user type. So we've got guest and we've got member, okay? So these top three here are guests, and they've been created by invitation, okay? Whereas these two here are members. So let's go through creating a new user. You'd simply click on here, create a new user, or again, invite an external user, maybe to collaborate or something like that. Click on new user. We can have a user principal name here. So if I click on select Tony Blair, and then we can choose the domain account that we want. So I will keep it as that. The display name as well, but well, we want it to be his name like that, but you can have it how you want. The auto generate password is clicked on here. So click on the I there and it'll tell you which one it is. And then you can copy that. And thirdly, we can create this user enabled. Or if we, if we unselect, this, unselect this box here, it will create the user, but they'll be in a disabled state. Next, we click on properties. We can fill out some more information here. This is handy to do. So Tony Blair is a member. You can put job title. This is ideal if you want to create things like dynamic uh, groups, which we're going to talk about in a moment. The company name is Integral IT. You can click on departments, employee ID, employee types. We can put in lots more information here, as you can see. Okay. I won't do all that for the purpose of this demo. Click on assignments. And then we can add them to some groups or some roles. And we can also add them to some administrative units as well. But that's that's a whole new video altogether. So if you click on groups, we've not got a lot of groups in this tenancy at the moment. As I said, it's just a test tenancy. We have got a government finance one. So we could add Tony to that group. Click on select. And he's a member of that group. 
and you can also add him as a role. So a group is like a collection of people, but a role are the permissions that they can do within 365. We've got a lot of different roles here, as you can see. We can look at something like compliance administrator. And there's a description here, can read and manage compliance configuration. So there's a lot of different roles that we can add them to if we want. I'm not going to do that one. I'll click on next and create. Bit of a summary here, and we can simply click on create. And that user has been created. So it says successfully created up there. If I just click on refresh, we can see that that user is now in our enter ID. Just a few other settings in this users section. We've got some audit logs that we can sometimes look at if we need to. And we've also got sign in logs. So you can see who is signing in from what IP address, what location, if there's conditional access policies. We've got a whole lot of information here and that is good for security. We can analyze exactly what is happening. So you can see here, I've signed in. There's no conditional access policy and it's single factor authentication. So that's quite naughty because there's not multi-factor authentication enabled. Okay, uh, we've got deleted users. So if I go into all users and I get rid of Tony because it just, well, it didn't work out, we can click on there and Tony gets deleted from there. Successfully deleted, click on refresh, Tony has gone. And you might do that by accident, but it's okay because you can go over to here and Tony is there. So I can simply click on there and I can restore him if I want. There's a sign here, look, user permanent deleted automatically 30 days after you've deleted them. So if it's 30 days since you deleted Tony, it won't be available to restore. So just keep an eye on that. And then we've got a password reset section, and I'm going to cover that a little bit later in the demo, okay? Because it also has it in protection here. The next thing I want to talk about is groups. So we can go on to groups here. Groups are a really good way to organize the security and the collaboration of your Microsoft 365. You can have different types of groups. Just to show you, let's create a new one. Firstly, we've got a couple of different types of group. We've got a security group and we've got a Microsoft 365 group. Security is as the name suggests. You can create a security group, give it a name and add people into that group. And that controls various security access to your 365, what people can do, what they can access and things like that. Microsoft 365 group is something slightly different. It's usually used for things like collaborations. So you might have a Microsoft 365 group called marketing and people in that group will have access to certain collaboration features in Microsoft 365. So to create a group, we simply create a name for one. So we'll call this finance team. A description is quite handy. And then you can add Microsoft Entra roles to this group if you want to do that. You've also got to give it an owner, add members, and add roles to that group. If we click on no here, we've also got an option to create a dynamic group. So what's a dy dynamic group? Well, we can add a query here. So this is where when we're creating the user and we're putting all the information for Tony Blair in, things like his company, his department, this is really handy. So we can create a dynamic group and we can choose a property. And we could say something like, Every member who we create, who is part of a certain department, they will automatically be added into that group. So the group is dynamic. You're not manually putting people in and out of that group. People are putting groups depending on various properties. So it's a handy feature for you to use. Just go back to groups here. I won't save that. So that is groups. The next section here are your devices that are added to Entra. So you've got an overview here. I don't think we've got any devices in here ourselves. No, we haven't because as I said, it's just a test tenant, but you can see you've got a lot of, a lot of information about the OS, your join type, your owner, all things like that. Plus you've got your BitLocker keys, which are registered here in Entra. So if you ever need a BitLocker key, this is where you will find it. So you've got all your devices there. Next, we've got applications. So this is where you can use the power of single sign-on. So we could click on new application here. Say if our business used Dropbox, for example, there you go. We can then configure enter ID and Dropbox. So it's single sign on. So people are logging on to Dropbox with their 365 credentials and security. So this is where you bring all your third party applications and users are using one identity 
for everything. That's really, really powerful, okay? And of course, a big section of Entra is protection, okay? So that is here. Now, there's a lot of different protection settings. There will be more videos published by me in the next few weeks on how to use these, but we'll just go over a few settings now. So firstly, we've got conditional access. Now, if you're new to conditional access, it's a very powerful tool. Basically, you can create conditional access policies. So everybody has to meet the conditions of access to access your Microsoft 365. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at our test tenant, we've actually got 18 policies here. So let's have a look at a few of those. So firstly, we've got a conditional access policy here. We require that all users have to have MFA enabled before they can access our Microsoft 365. All administrators have to have MFA enabled. All guests do. Plus, we require security information from trusted locations. That's another conditional access policy. And we've got strict location enforcement. That means that people can't access our Microsoft 365 if they're in certain countries. So as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do with conditional access policies to help secure your Microsoft 365. Next, we move on to authentication methods. Again, there's lots of different things you can use here for two-factor authentication. Uh, these are if it's enabled or not. So you can use the security keys, which is like the YubiKey settings. Got Microsoft Authenticator, to the app. Again, that's not enabled at the moment. SMS, which is as time goes on, proving not to be as secure as other methods, so you can not enable that. And you've got lots of different things you can use. We've then got the uh, protection of passwords. So your lockout threshold, if someone's trying to hammer your login to try and get in, it will lock it out after so many attempts. And how long will it lock that out for? Plus, you can ban certain passwords. So I used to, um, we used to work with a company and they used to like the same password for everything. It was their company name, one, two, three. And they just used to use that password for everything. So what we could do here is click on here and we could say, actually, we won't allow people to use that password. So that's a handy feature to use. Plus, we've talked about how important MFA is. Simply enabling MFA is not always a good idea, okay? Because it can cause more problems than it cures initially. So what you can do, you can start up what Microsoft call a registration campaign. So you can set it so they've got so many days that they're allowed to snooze it. It will prompt them to set up MFA. They can snooze it. How many times they can they snooze it, etc. So you could send an email to your client saying, look, during January, we're going to enable MFA. We're going to start a registration campaign. You can let people snooze it for maybe 30 days. So some people will enable it straight away. Some people will wait to, the, wait to the end of the month, but it's a nice campaign to get your tenant MFA enabled. And then I promise to talk about password reset. This is a, a good thing to do. It just allows people to reset their own passwords. Okay, so you can select that to all. You can select the group you want to apply it to. And then you've got authentication methods. Okay, so how many methods required to reset so you might so they might need a code from the mobile they might need an email we can set that to one or we can ask them lots of security questions okay so they've got to register five security questions and when they come to reset the password they've got three of them that they need to get right so this is allowing people to reset their own passwords so that is essentially it. That is a, a beginner's overview to Microsoft Entry. You can see there's a load more settings here, and we'll be covering these in future demos. So I hope you've enjoyed this beginner's video into Entry ID. I look forward to seeing you again soon.